In the nation of Fontaine, magicians benefit from one's ability to deceive and amaze an audience. The more creative a magician is, the more clearly that person is able to comprehend something. Something that could surprise and amaze a group of people watching every movement, hoping that they could figure out the tricks up a magician's sleeve. These magicians clearly had a number of experiments in practice that they performed behind the scenes. The amount of effort it takes for a magician to prepare is highly unrecognized as they need to think of new tricks every day just for the amusement of a number of people. However, that did not faze the two twin sisters who lived in poverty among the sewers of the Flow of Sandra. Having both lived before the Cataclysm, 500 years prior to the events of the present day, the two twin sisters relied on stealing and robbing as a way to survive. They went from house to house of noble citizens and stole all valuables that could be sold. That's not to say that they didn't have a desire for theatrics. As a matter of fact, the twin sisters soon realized that they could perform tricks and shows for a way to earn honest money. The change of interest could solely be inspired by a nameless magician who they took notice of as they were thieving and robbing. Perhaps they realized that they needed to grow and wanted to make a name for themselves, one that could last through the ages. In order to clear their past and start for a new reputation, they decided to take on the names of the characters from one of Coppelius's literature works. Coppelius was a playwright who lived during that time and wrote plays that were either based on true stories or simply from his creativity. One play was loosely based on the fallen noble Parsifal and the blue-eyed spear witch who lived during the Mondstadt aristocracy period. He wrote many famous plays such as The Golden Hyperborea and Clockwork Coppelia, which contributed to Fontaine's reputation for excelling in theater and arts. However, during his last play, The Clockwork Coppelia, the opera house which it premiered was burnt, which killed the spectators and performers. This included Coppelius, who was excited to showcase his latest play at that time to the citizens of Fontaine. In the present day, one of the researchers in the Fontaine Research Institute named Boswet was inspired by Clockwork Coppelia and created the mechanical robots of Icewind Suite. After leaving the Institute, the Icewind Suite was taken over by Mallardet, who then added combat abilities for the mechanical robots. Heading back to the story of the twin sisters, they took on the names of Parsifal the Great and Josephine, where the former would act as the main spectacle of the show, while the latter would act as the assistant, residing in the shadows. The magician twins grew to learn magic as a supplement to their other skills and developed showmanship. They began their shows at small taverns within Flav Sandra. These taverns were owned by Eduardo Baker, the outlaw leader of the place. With each performance, the twin sisters formed a close ties relationship with Eduardo Baker and in turn allowed them to continue performing in his taverns. Without a doubt, they were able to parlay their skills at theft into being magic performers for both the people in the court of Fontaine and the Flav Sandra. In a short span of time, they rose to being renowned performers but still remained connected to their impoverished background in the Flav Sandra. Their magical shows were, however, intruded as the Masson Gardenage ordered a purge of the people living at Flav Sandra. As the twin sisters refused to let their home be taken by the Masson Gardenage, they agreed and offered to help Eduardo Baker in his resistance. However, during the purge of the Flav Sandra, Eduardo Baker and Parsifal the Great were arrested and exiled to the desert. In the aftermath of the destruction, Josephine rushed to the Flav Sandra, only to find her sister taken away by the Masson Gardenage. Without her older sister to guide her, she hid in a dark, safe cavern, hoping to see her sister again. Along the way to the deserts of Sumeru, Eduardo Baker's men who survived the purge ambushed the escort and managed to free him and Parsifal the Great. They meet up with other members of the Fontanian lower class in Poisson. A famed journalist whose name was Carl Ingold makes his way to Poisson and attempts to mediate peace talks between the Masson Gardenage and Eduardo Baker's men also taking a picture of Parsifal the Great and her allies. However, negotiations were unsuccessful, and Emmanuel Guillotine led the siege of Poisson. Karl Ingold, who returned to the court of Fontaine following his attempt at preventing bloodshed, receives an invoice and gets notified of the violent clash that leads to the death of Eduardo Baker, Renaud de Petricor, and Parsifal the Great. Josephine emerges from hiding and uses the persona of Parsifal the Great, she does not use the Josephine persona ever again, as Parsifal the Great can stand alone, but Josephine cannot exist without Parsifal the Great. This supposed magic trick makes Carl believe that the original Parsifal the Great survived. 
Still, Carl Ingold retires from journalism and is traumatized by the events during the Siege of Busan. Josephine, as Parsifal the Great, is called upon to answer for the unexpected transgression of siding with Baker's men during the Siege of Busan. She chooses to duel against Marfisa, a champion duelist, instead of standing trial. Marfisa, despite her origin and past connection to Parsifal, who potentially could have been raised in Flavsandra, kills Josephine in battle, bringing the Parsifal the Great persona to an end. With the two twin sisters now dead, the story of Parsifal the Great and Josephine comes to a conclusion as it continues to inspire many aspiring magicians and hope to also turn in a new leaf from rags to riches. It's crazy to think that the most obvious replacements for Parsifal the Great and Josephine are Linny and Lynette in the present day. Through magic shows, the impoverished full of Sandra locals in both pairs are able to advance in society. The face of the magic is one sibling, while the other one lives in the shadows and serves as their helper. This then marks the end of this short video. I'm hoping to make more of these as they really help you players to understand and know more of Genshin's lore and world building. There are a lot of more subplots happening within this timeline, such as Basil Elton and Elenus's clash, the continuation of Rena's world formula, the sad story of Carter's death, the tale behind Marianne, and the explanation of characters in the world quest, the Nartis and Kreutz adventure. If you have any more to add to the story, then feel free to do so in the comments. That's all I have for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. So, as usual, my name's Clementine, until the next one, be safe and stay tuned.